Welcome. Let's talk about the King Indian. King's Indian defense, rather. And a rather interesting transition to the end game. It actually works out quite well. So let's go ahead and dive in. As always, there'll be a link in the description to some full analysis. You can check that out at your leisure. And let's jump in. All right, so we're playing the King's Indian. And we get this typical beginning where we're going to play this h3 and this bishop e3. And our idea is that we're going to play f or play g4. And we're trying to stop this f5 idea. And, you know, often uh, white, black tries to go for this pretty immediately. Uh, so we play this. And then here my opponent played c6, which is a pretty typical way, combining uh, this attack on c6, trying to just chip away at our center. He's going to try to chip away from here, try to chip away from here. No big deal. So we play knight g2. And now this queen comes out. And this is a mistake, of course. Or not of course, it's not obvious that it's a mistake. Uh, but it can be kind of a problematic idea. And here I just opted to bring the knight in, which is a bit of a mess. It's actually uh, quite a bit better to play here, because you know this is why this is such a mistake, because this is a big threat here. And now h6 has kind of got to happen. And we can just play bishop g2, we can castle, and we have a pretty fantastic position. This knight's stuck here, sort of defending this. If you capture here, we might even take with the knight and say that this queen is off sides, and you know, your queen and your bishop are stuck defending this guy, this would be a pretty miserable situation. We could even try to play g5 immediately, and maybe we're gonna sneak in here and trap the queen or something like this. Uh, this would have been better, but you know, what I played isn't terrible. I'm still just trying to prevent this. And here, f5 is what was played. And this is like just a losing blunder out of the gate. And so takes, takes, and here takes, and now bishop takes. And of course I grabbed this guy and he takes back with the rook, no choice. All right, so here it seems like uh, our typical idea would be to try to play queen to d2, castle, put a rook on the g file, put this put this knight to e4 and just go for an all out attack. Um, but I want to, I, I had an idea here that came across because Matt and I are working on sort of an advanced course for the d4 and we're looking at some additional lines and I captured an idea that we're covering in a line here and applied it. And it's to transition this into an end game. And just to say that we're going to be a lot better in this end game. So I played queen to g4, which I think is quite a surprising move. We're offering queen trades. And it doesn't seem like that's what we want to do uh, because this king is so exposed looking. And we still have this option to get our king out of the way. Of course, this is forced. Uh, I mean, it's not totally forced. You could try to play something like this. Uh, but now after bishop d3, um, I don't know, let's take a look at it. bishop d3. If you don't want to lose the rook immediately, you got to try to play rook f4, or you can try to play here. Uh, but this is going to get rook g1. Things are going to start getting hairy in a hurry. We have maybe this bishop to e4 is going to come at any point, And this rook is probably going to fall quickly. And if not that, then this h7 attack is going to come. These guys are still stuck here out of the way, which is kind of a big point of why this idea even works to begin with. Uh, so here, uh, of course, they took, they took, and now this rook moves back out of the way. And I play bishop to d3. I did not want to allow this pawn to come forward to e4, because if I can maintain this pawn stuck at e4, this bishop continues to blow. And additionally, uh, the bishop looks nice here because we're attacking this guy. Uh, so here, bishop f8 was played, uh, allowing the rook here, also defending this pawn. And, you know, here I played bishop to f5. And my idea was that I now threatening to come here. So it feels like you need to move the rook again. Um, instead, my opponent played here, defending it this way. And I had kind of a nice idea. Um, I originally just thought I would just castle because these bishops look great. We have the bishop pair and there's a lot of awkwardness here. Uh, but I had kind of a cool idea and that was to play this bishop to c8. Now the computer gives it a mistake, but I'm still like a plus three position. So this idea is not so terrible. Um, you know, they should just take and give up the material. So the point is, is that after takes, uh, I can even play knight takes d5. And yes, you can try to come here and you've defended this pawn, uh, but you can't ever really move it. Uh, I'm now threatening to come here. You've got to do something. Uh, you can't develop this knight very easily because I'm just going to come here. If you have to move the rook, um, I don't know. What are you going to do? Where are you going to put it? Like, say, say you put it here. This looks sort of natural. Uh, but now rook c1 comes. And I'm defending the bishop. Uh, you probably need to trade. And this this pawn is going to be a goner at some point. Um, instead of this, uh, my opponent played here, which I thought was pretty natural. But now just takes and takes. And I'm up two clean pawns now. Um, I went on to draw this game. 
you know, spoiler alert. It's such a frustrating because this looks like such a dominant position. And it is. Knight c5. Uh, I can get rid of my bishop here. And now I've split this. Look at these. I have four of the weakest pawns on earth. I'm up a couple of pawns. And here I played here. I, apparently I should just castle and give up this pawn. That seems strange to me. I wanted to play here. Uh, or I wanted to play like here, here, and then here. Or I wanted to do something like this. So maybe I'm bring this rook up and capture here, put this one here, put the king here, maybe I'll double. I just wanted to get my pieces active, and I thought the king made sense to stay here. All this is fine. Uh, so they jumped in. I played rook to d5. I'm threatening this pawn. I'm threatening this pawn. Uh, I'm maybe going to come up to here. Uh, I can't really play rook to d7 right now. I mean, I suppose I can. Uh, but this probably is not so great because you're just going to take and you take here and I can't queen because of this guy. This is a big problem. I had this idea earlier of when the knight is still on this square. Let's say you make a random move, something like here. Uh, well, now I really can play rook d7 because I take and you can't take here because I make a queen. Ah. So anyway, let's, let's get to the point where I blow this. I play here and he drops back and now he's going to win one of these pawns. And so I went ahead and grabbed this pawn. I saw his point was to take here, I'm gonna take, and then you have this capture, you're threatening here, and you're also threatening to come here. Uh, but it's all fine, because I can play b3, and you play, and I drop back, I defend it, everything's great. Now you go here, and I move out of the way. Here is equally good. And now here, and this is where I made my blunder, because I, I, I thought, okay, fine, I, I'm just gonna play knight to d5 soon, and, you know, I'm going to be able to trade some rooks off. I'm still up a bunch of pawns. I'm up, yeah, I'm still up, so I'm still up two clean pawns. And I went absolutely bazonkers crazy here. The best move and the only move that really maintains a significant advantage is just defend the rook. And we're fine. I mean, you can give a check. I'll sneak out of the way. Everything's totally golden here. Uh, but instead, I got lazy and I just traded and then, boom, in between moves. <sighs> instant equality and not even i don't know it's still not clear i feel thought i maybe had something to play for uh i played king f1 takes and now i grab this pawn and comes here and i thought you know i've got three pawns for the piece I, I might even still be winning here if i can get rid of one of these pawns and get these guys rolling it turns out the bishop's pretty strong though and i sort of struggled played f4 comes across we'll go through this relatively quickly here i gotta move out of the way and my idea is to capture to go here and pick up this pawn and then i thought maybe these guys are stronger uh so here and he takes this guy but then i get what i wanted now i've taken here and i'm still somewhat worse but it's tough to win this uh a5 is a really nice move and i'm gonna go ahead and bring up and this i can't believe that this is best because it gives away all your winning chances uh, all of them, like entirely, because now you have no pawn, and you can win all three of these pawns now, and it's a dead draw, absolutely draw, and that's more or less what happened. Captures here. I'm trying to be clever. Uh, come cutting the king off. He comes this way. I think I can advance the pawn now. He comes back, but then I have here, and you can't. If you take this, is instant draw. I missed. I thought actually was like going to be able to advance the pawn again, and like maybe this is seriously strong but actually you can just take it because uh you can block with the bishop now and again this is still totally a, a drawn position uh, i can give up the pawn if i want and now after this i can force the exchange of rooks and now it's totally a draw uh but going back to kind of the key point uh after we got this far and we got this queen here uh coming into h5 and all these exchanges to me uh, it was a surprising idea in this other sort of position to this queen g4 exchanging off the queens because this king is super exposed and uh, it just doesn't make sense why we would it doesn't initially make sense why we want to trade off but the point is is that we activate our rook uh, we have the bishop pair still this is really far behind in development this rook is pretty awkward and we're gonna be able to get all of our pieces into the game with tempo and create a really strong lasting initiative and as long as you don't blunder it like i did and even though i did blunder i still came up with like still somehow managed to have a relatively comfortable 
draw at a really strong position. Uh, anyhow, uh, I hope that you guys get to take this idea and be on the lookout for this advanced course that Matt and I are working on. Additional lines is probably going to like double or triple the number of lines uh, for a lot of the key openings that we're really focusing on the ones you face most. So none of these like weird sidelines you see almost never. We're going to focus on the things that you're seeing a lot based on uh, my games. I've been playing this repertoire now for quite a while. I have hundreds of games in it. And we're just showing additional ideas for the stuff that I face that we didn't cover in the original course. Uh, as always, take a look here for the next video on this King's Indian. Take your journey into improving. I'll see you guys later. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.